What's going on guys, Don over at Beast Mode and REI Automation Squad and uh, just wanted to go over a question we had regarding a sync of your appointments to your Google Calendar and some of the different options uh, and how you can make that happen as well as uh, some notifications that you can potentially get uh, in doing that. So um, out of the box, we have uh, Beast Mode here. This is a workspace uh, that we've set up and we have the Property Leads app where we have our seller's information, property information, and that then includes appointment offer contract details. So uh, your date of appointment, all that stuff is going to be here. Um, and I'll show you in a minute, but there are four date fields uh, that automatically will show up on your workspace calendar. Those dates are gonna be appointment set, offer expiration date, uh, your inspection period for the contract and your scheduled close date or closing date um, for the seller. Those are all set up uh, to show on the workspace calendar. If you're on the activity screen and you come down here, you have a workspace calendar. You click on the blue spot. This will open up your uh, workspace calendar. If you use the blue calendar up here, if you only have one workspace, this will again show that workspace calendar, but it has some different options that we'll go over in a minute. Uh, if you have more than one workspace, this shows all of your workspaces, whereas the activity screen that I was just at and clicked on will only show this specific workspace. So what do I mean by that? These are workspaces over here. If you have more than one, if you come up here, you see everything. Otherwise on the activity screen, you can come in and sync your workspace calendar. So if you come up here to the wrench and export to calendar, you can either do iCal or Google Calendar Exchange and connect it. And it will show your task and or the date fields that you have uh, currently set up. Again, those four that I listed off uh, would show up on your Google Calendar. It's a one way sync. So anything that is showing up on this calendar will show up on your Google Calendar. If you make an adjustment on the Google Calendar, it will not come back through to uh, the Podio side. So just know the adjustments must happen in Podio. Uh, you can't just click on this and add items. The items show up here because of the items that are in uh, your different apps that have date fields that are supposed to show up on your calendar. Uh, specifically, we have it set right now where it's just the items in the Property Leads app. So I'm gonna show you real quick by clicking on the Property Leads app and coming into one of these test items. If I scroll down to the appointment section, let me go back up here. So you have your nav links that you can click or we can scroll uh, and get down to the sections as well. Um, but it's specifically the appointment section we talked about, date of appointment will show up uh, on the calendar and then offer expiration date, date offer expires is under the offer detail section. This date field is currently set to show on your calendar. And then when we get to the under contract section, we have um, our inspection period so inspection period and then the contract closing date uh, showing up and you can see that if you are an admin by clicking modify template and if you go to any of those date fields that we just brought up let's see here let me get to the appointment one date of appointment you can see this button is clicked to show on calendar so Right now those four are all clicked. You could unclick a couple of them if you only wanted certain ones to show up or you could click additional date fields to show up on your calendar. But all four of those will show up currently on the workspace calendar along with your task. Um, if you go up here and sync your calendar through this section, you have the option to now pick a certain things that you want to show up as well as clicking or unclicking uh, your task to show up. So this one has a little bit more options if you're using this section versus going through the workspace calendar. Um, so take those things into consideration. Um, the other thing that I want to bring up is if you wanted to sync just appointments uh, to your calendar, there is a way to do that. Um, you'd have to create an app and it would be an event type app. So you click on create your own app and it'd be an event type app. Let's just click something like that as an icon. You can see here advanced, you can do some things such as not allowing a comment. Um, if I was gonna do an event type app like this, I would probably make it toward you disable the comments so that they're still leaving only comments in the property lead app. Um, and uh, you, know, you can choose some of the adjustments of whether they can add or edit items, things like that. Whether you want these edits to post to the stream, I'd think about maybe posting it to where those do or do not. Uh, just take that stuff into consideration. You can always come back later and adjust it. Um, for now, I'm gonna leave it. Again, we have our appointments, event type. We're gonna create the app. 
uh, it's going to show us what this app looks like. Um, so you can have a meeting title if you want. Um, this would typically be something like the uh, property address or seller's name, something like that. So for now, um, I will put sellers and then I would probably have a location field with the property address. And then you have your meeting date. You see it says show on calendar. You can have it show the end time if you want to do something like a start time of, let's just say, 9 a.m., end time at 10 o'clock if you're going to have an hour-long uh, meeting scheduled with them. Uh, and this will let you select your uh, member in your organization, so what team member is going on that appointment. Um, and then you could, if you wanted to, have something like the uh, notes or whatever from that appointment here or just remove this. Now, for me, uh, we're more or less talking about having an app where you can have the notifications sent to you when an appointment is uh, coming. And so for now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this just as it is. One last thing that I'm gonna put in here is the seller's phone number. So I'm gonna pull that out and pull in phone number and we'll put seller. So we have seller's phone right there and I'm gonna click done. Okay, so we now have all of this stuff done. We have the ability to add appointments. Um, ideally, you'd probably want to show your appointments for uh, the next seven days, the last 30 days, month over month, something like that, creating those views. And we can do a video on that later. But just as an instance, um, we'll create an item. Timmy the seller and phone number. Property address. Okay, so we got property address, and then we're going to put the meeting date. I'm going to go ahead and put a date and time in here. Let's see. So we're going to give an hour long. We're going to um, have this set for us as the person that's going on the appointment, and we're going to save that appointment. Now, a couple things is going to happen. Um, you can see here that you can make it to where it repeats. You can click to have it remind you. Um, those are all things that can happen. And as you can see here, you can click the drop down that you get a reminder an hour before or 30 minutes, whatever the case may be. Um, you as the user would have to make that happen. Uh, and depending on your settings, you should get a reminder via notifications on Podio as well as potentially an email. Um, the other thing is you can actually add the stuff to a calendar, right? So um, for this one specifically, it'll download calendar thing. What I wanted to show you is once this is created and once you have an app, what most of our users would want to do is you would see this, um, you would want to come up to the wrench and add this app to your calendar. And so, for instance, Google Calendar and uh, the one that we're in right now, I'll go ahead and set it up so that it goes to the calendar. And you're going to have to allow that it pushes the stuff to your calendar. Okay, that says that it's connected. I'll show you that on the calendar here in a minute, what that looks like. Um, and then as far as this stuff, if you want something to be a little bit different as far as a layout, you can click layout options um, and you'll be able to change the way this tile uh, shows or looks. So let's see if we can click that. Go back and then refresh. unless we're not allowed to change layout. Okay, we are uh, able to change out layout. We're in badge format, put seller's name, um, and then uh, normally you could put like a date, whoever uh, is going, and potentially something like the property address and probably seller's phone number. And you can always adjust this different stuff, but um, save it. Obviously now you have the address, you have um, the number for the person, you have their uh, who's going, date and time and everything right there. And uh, last thing that I'll talk about is the creating of views. So if you do a created view, uh, appointments last seven days, keep it as a team view, uh, split by uh, meeting date and daily. And then on the filters, you'll want to go to meeting date and past seven days. So appointment, appointments last seven days, save that. 
that'll show you for the last seven days how many appointments you've had and it'll break out by day how many. Now, if you wanted to do something like appointments month over month to see each month how many appointments you had in this app, you could create a new view. Appointments by month, team view, split by, meeting date, monthly, and we'll make sure we remove this. And so we got no filters on it and we'll save it. And now it'll show us month over month how many appointments we have, okay? So those are some of the things that maybe you wanna create and track. Um, give me a second and I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like on the calendar now. Okay, so I just wanted to show that you're gonna get um, an a email here and then you see here it is on the Google Calendar um, and the date time, everything is here with the uh, address and everything as well because we did the map field. Um, so those are things just to take into uh, consideration, but like I said, uh, edit and calendar, just keep that stuff in mind with what was brought up. Uh, I'm gonna do a separate video for those um, that are looking at some of the connections that can happen with Zapier and some potential reminders and things that you could do uh, with the Zapier connection. But uh, for those of you that are looking for more of a reminder type um, via appointments um, and specifically for appointments, when a certain person is added to an appointment that's going on it, I think this will fit with what you're looking for. Um, as I've mentioned, we use Acuity uh, Scheduler rather than this, uh, simply because we could send out text reminders uh, to both the seller and us, as well as emails. And at the end of the day, we could have our team members see uh, what was available for scheduling. We could block out certain times, connect it to our Google Calendar. So Acu Acuity Scheduler might be an option as well. It's fairly cheap uh, to make all that stuff happen. Uh, but any questions, feel free to post below the video. I uh, figured this would help out some of you guys that are trying to connect appointments and uh, an easy way to get those notifications and reminders uh, on that. All right, take care.